Sol Invictus was the official sun god of the later Roman Empire and a patron of soldiers. In 274 AD the Roman Emperor Aurelian made it an official cult alongside the traditional Roman cults. Scholars disagree about whether the new deity was a re-foundation of the ancient Latin cult of Sol, a revival of the cult of El Agabalis or completely new. The god was favored by emperors after Aurelian and appeared on the coins until Constantine I. The last inscription referring to Sol Invictus dates to AD 387, and there were enough devotees in the 5th century that Augustine found it necessary to preach against them. The tradition, dating from the 12th century, that the near solstice date of 25 December for Christmas was selected because it was the date of the Roman festival of Dies Natalis Solus Invicta is now challenged by some scholars. Different explanations for the date similarity are considered to be academically thoroughly viable hypotheses by some. Both theories have supporters, with some claiming that the festival of Dies Natalis Solus Invicta was later syncretized with Christmas and others saying that the Christian celebration may predate the festival of the Dies Natalis Solus Invicta. Invictus as epithet. Invictus was an epithet for several deities of classical Roman religion, including the supreme deity Jupiter, the war god Mars, Hercules, Apollo, and Sylvanus. It had been in use from the 3rd century BC. The Roman cult to Sol is continuous from the earliest history of the city until the institution of Christianity as the exclusive state religion. Scholars have sometimes regarded the traditional Sol and Sol Invictus as two separate deities, but the rejection of this view by S. E. Hymons has found supporters. An inscription of AD 102 records the restoration of a portico of Sol in what is now the Trastevere area of Rome by a certain Gaius Lulius Anicetus. While he may perhaps have had in mind an allusion to his own cognomen, which is the Latinized form of the Greek equivalent of Invictus, New Iota Caparata Tau Omicron Sigma, the earliest extant dated inscription that uses Invictus as an epithet of Sol is from AD 158. Another, stylistically dated to the 2nd century, is inscribed on a Roman phalera, Inventory Luci Soli in Victor Augusto. Augustus is a regular epithet linking deities to the imperial cult. Sol Invictus played a prominent role in the Mythaic Mysteries and was equated with Mithras himself. The relation of the Mithraic Sol Invictus to the public cult of the deity with the same name is unclear and perhaps non-existent. El Agabalus, the first sun god consistently termed Invictus was the provincial Syrian god El Agabalus. According to the Historia Augusta, the teenage Severin heir adopted the name of his deity and brought his cult image from Emesa to Rome. Once installed as emperor, he neglected Rome's traditional state deities and promoted his own as Rome's most powerful deity. This ended with his murder in 222. The Historia Augusta refers to the deity El Agabalus is also called Jupiter and Sol. While this has been seen as an attempt to import the Syrian sun god to Rome, the Roman cult of Sol had existed in Rome in the earlier Republic. Aurelian the Roman gens Aurelia was associated with the cult of Sol. After his victories in the east, the emperor Aurelian thoroughly reformed the Roman cult of Sol, elevating the sun god to one of the premier divinities of the empire, where previously priests of Sol had been simply sacerdotes and tended to belong to lower ranks of Roman society. They were now pontifice and members of the new college of pontifice instituted by Aurelian. Every pontifex of Sol was a member of the senatorial elite, indicating that the priesthood of Sol was now highly prestigious. Almost all these senators held other priesthoods as well, however, and some of these other priesthoods take precedence in the inscriptions in which they are listed suggesting that they were considered more prestigious than the priesthood of Sol. Aurelian also built a new temple for Sol, bringing the total number of temples for the god in Rome to four. He also instituted games in honor of the sun god, held every four years from AD 274 onwards. 
The identity of Aurelian's Sol Invictus has long been a subject of scholarly debate. Based on the Historia Augusta, some scholars have argued that it was based on Sol Eligibilis of Emesa. Others, basing their argument on Zosimus, suggest that it was based on the Sams, the solar god of Palmyra on the grounds that Aurelian placed and consecrated a cult statue of the sun god looted from Palmyra in the Temple of Sol, Invictus. Professor Gary Forsyth discusses these arguments and adds a third more recent one based on the work of Stephen Hymans. Hymans argues that Aurelian's solar deity was simply the traditional Greco-Roman Sol Invictus. Constantine, emperors portrayed Sol Invictus on their official coinage, with a wide range of legends, only a few of which incorporated the epithet Invictus such as the legend Soli Invictocomiti, claiming the unconquered son as a companion to the emperor, used with particular frequency by Constantine. Statuettes of Sol Invictus, carried by the standard bearers, appear in three places in reliefs on the Arch of Constantine. Constantine's official coinage continues to bear images of Sol until 325 sixths. A solidus of Constantine as well as a gold medallion from his reign depict the emperor's bust in profile twinned with Sol Invictus, with the legend Invictus Constantinus Constantine decreed dies solis, day of the sun, Sunday, as the Roman day of rest. On the venerable day of the sun let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. In the country however persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits because it often happens that another day is not suitable for grain sowing or vine planting, lest by neglecting the proper moment for such operations the bounty of heaven should be lost. Constantine's triumphal arch was carefully positioned to align with the colossal statue of Sol by the Colosseum, so that Sol formed the dominant backdrop when seen from the direction of the main approach towards the arch. Sol and the other Roman emperors, Berens deals with coin evidence of imperial connection to the Sola cult. Sol is depicted sporadically on imperial coins in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, then more frequently from Septimius Severus onwards until AD 325 6. Sol Invictus appears on coin legends from AD 261, well before the reign of Aurelian. Connections between the imperial radiate crown and the cult of Sol are postulated. Augustus was posthumously depicted with radiate crown, as were living emperors from Nero to Constantine. Some modern scholarship interprets the imperial radiate crown as a divine solar association rather than an overt symbol of Sol. Bergman calls it a pseudo-object designed to disguise the divine and solar connotations that would otherwise be politically controversial but there is broad agreement that coin images showing the imperial radiate crown are stylistically distinct from those of the solar crown of rays. The imperial radiate crown is depicted as a real object rather than a symbolic light. Hymans argues that the imperial radiate crown represents the honorary wreath awarded to Augustus, perhaps posthumously, to commemorate his victory at the Battle of Action. He points out that henceforth, living emperors were depicted with radiate crowns, but state evi were not. To Hymans this implies the radiate crown of living emperors is a link to Augustus. His successes automatically inherited the same offices and honors due to Octavian as savior of the Republic through his victory at Actium, piously attributed to Apollo Helios. Wreaths awarded to victors at the Action Games were Radiate, Festival of Dies Natalis Solus Invicta. The Philokalian calendar of AD 354 gives a festival of Natalis Invicta on 25 December. There is limited evidence that this festival was celebrated before the mid-4th century. 
Sol Invictus and Christianity The idea that Christians chose to celebrate the birth of Jesus on the 25th of December because this was the date of an already existing festival of the Sol Invictus was expressed in an annotation to a manuscript of a work by 12th century Syrian bishop Jacob Bar Salabi. The scribe who added it wrote, it was a custom of the pagans to celebrate on the same the 25th of December the birthday of the sun, at which they kindled lights in token of festivity. In these solemnities and revelries the Christians also took part. Accordingly when the doctors of the church perceived that the Christians had a leaning to this festival, they took counsel and resolved that the true nativity should be solemnized on that day. The idea became popular especially in the 18th and 19th centuries. In the 20th century, however, the view that Christmas was set by the date of Dies Natalis Solus Invicta has been challenged by some scholars. According to a discussion from the Church of England, for example, on this question there are two schools of thought. The older view is that these two dates represent Christian adaptation of the respective winter solstice dates in the West and East, which were already important pagan festivals. Those who hold this view cite the celebrations connected with Apollo, Mithras and Dionysius with their themes of birth and rebirth and the coming of the deity to dwell with his followers. In Rome by 274 AD the winter solstice was a public holiday in honor of Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun. Although this view is still very common, it has been seriously challenged by what may be called the calculation theory. The calculation refers to an alternate derivation of the date of Christmas based on an old tradition according to which the date of Christmas was fixed at nine months after the 25th of March. The date of the vernal equinox, on which the Annunciation was celebrated, the Jewish calendar date of 14 Nisan was believed to be that of creation, as well as of the Exodus and so of Passover, and Christians held that the new creation, both the death of Jesus and the beginning of his human life, occurred on the same date, which some put at the 25th of March in the Julian calendar. It was a traditional Jewish belief that great men lived a whole number of years without fractions, so that Jesus was considered to have been conceived on the 25th of March, as he died on the 25th of March, which was calculated to have coincided with 14 Nisan. Sextus Julius Africanus gave the 25th of March as the day of creation and of the conception of Jesus. The Tractate de Solstitia Equinoctia Conceptionis A Nativitatis Domini Nostra Iesu Christi A Iohannis Baptiste falsely attributed to John. Chrysostom also argued that Jesus was conceived and crucified on the same day of the year and calculated this as the 25th of March. A passage of the commentary on the prophet Daniel by Hippolytus of Rome, written in about 204, has also been appealed to. This view was proposed by Louis Duchesne, and argued by Thomas J. Talley, David J. Rothenberg, Neil Alexander, and Hugh Y. Brew. The Oxford Companion to Christian Thought lists both theories for the origin of Christmas and also remarks on the uncertainty about the order of precedence between the celebrations of the birthday of the unconquered son and the birthday of Jesus. This calculations hypothesis potentially establishes the 25th of December as a Christian festival before Aurelian's decree, which, when promulgated, might have provided for the Christian feast both opportunity and challenge. Susan K. Roll calls most extreme the unprovand hypothesis that would call Christmas point blanca Christianization of Natalis Solus Invicta, a direct conscious appropriation of the pre-Christian feast, arbitrarily placed on the same calendar date, assimilating and adapting some of its cosmic symbolism and abruptly usurping any lingering habitual loyalty that newly converted Christians might feel to the feasts of the state gods. The nimbus of the figure under St. Peter's Basilica is described by some as rage, as in traditional pre-Christian representations. 
But another has said, only the cross-shaped nimbus makes the Christian significance apparent. Yet another has interpreted the figure as a representation of the sun with no explicit religious reference whatever, pagan or Christian. Jesus and the sun in ancient Christian writings among scholars who view the celebration of the birth of Jesus on the 25th of December in order to be close to the winter solstice, rather than that he was conceived and died on the 25th of March. Some reject the idea that this choice constituted a deliberate Christianization of a festival of the birthday of the unconquered sun. For example, Michael Allen Anderson writes, Both the sun and Christ were said to be born anew on December 25. But while the solar associations with the birth of Christ created powerful metaphors, the surviving evidence does not support such a direct association with the Roman solar festivals. The earliest documentary evidence for the Feast of Christmas makes no mention of the coincidence with the winter solstice. Thomas Talley has shown that, although the Emperor Aurelian's dedication of a temple to the sun god in the Campus Martius probably took place on the birthday of the invincible sun, on December 25, the cult of the sun in pagan Rome ironically did not celebrate the winter solstice nor any of the other quarter tense days, as one might expect. The origins of Christmas, then, may not be expressly rooted in the Roman festival. The same point is made by Hymons. It is cosmic symbolism, which inspired the church leadership in Rome to elect the southern solstice, December 25, as the birthday of Christ. While they were aware that pagans called this day the birthday of Sol Invictus, this did not concern them and it did not play any role in their choice of date for Christmas. He also states that, while the winter solstice on or around December 25 was well established in the Roman imperial calendar, there is no evidence that a religious celebration of Sol on that day antedated the celebration of Christmas. A study of Augustine of Hippo remarks that his exhortation in a Christmas sermon, let us celebrate this day as a feast not for the sake of this sun, which is beheld by believers as much as by ourselves, but for the sake of him who created the sun, shows that he was aware of the coincidence of the celebration of Christmas and the birthday of the unconquered sun. Although this pagan festival was celebrated at only a few places and was originally a peculiarity of the Roman city calendar, it adds, he also believes, however, that there is a reliable tradition which gives the 25th of December as the actual date of the birth of our Lord. The comparison of Christ with the astronomical sun is common in ancient Christian writings. In the 5th century, Pope Leo I spoke in several sermons on the Feast of the Nativity of how the celebration of Christ's birth coincided with increase of the sun's position in the sky. An example is, but this nativity which is to be adored in heaven and on earth is suggested to us by no day more than this when, with the early light still shedding its rays on nature, there is borne in upon our senses the brightness of this wondrous mystery. Christians adopted the image of the sun to represent Christ. In this portrayal he is a beardless figure with a flowing cloak in a chariot drawn by four white horses. As in the mosaic in Mausoleum M discovered under St. Peter's Basilica and in an early 4th century catacomb fresco, Clement of Alexandria had spoken of Christ driving his chariot in this way across the sky. Jesus is a sun god in the Bible. One theory connects the biblical elements of Christ's life to those of a sun god. According to the scriptures, Jesus had twelve followers or disciples, which is akin to the twelve zodiac constellations. When the sun was in the house of Scorpio, Judas plotted with the chief priests and elders to arrest Jesus by kissing him. As the sun exited Libra, it enters into the waiting arms of Scorpio to be kissed by Scorpio's bite. Many of the world's sacrifice godmen have their traditional birthday on December 25. During this time, people back then believed that God's son had died for three days and was born again on December 25. After December 25, the sun moves one degree, this time north, foreshadowing longer days. 
The three days following December 21st remain the darkest days of the year where Jesus dies and remains unseen for three days. The Son of Man in the Gospels can be linked to the constellation Orion which represents Jesus' a spirit. Revelation's description of the Son of Man fits the pattern of stars in the constellation Orion. The three stars at his waist were seen as the three wise men who announced the birth of Jesus. At the beginning of the first century, the sun on the vernal equinox passed from Aries to Pisces. That harmonizes with the mentioned lamb and fish in the Gospels. The man carrying a pitcher of water is Aquarius, the water bearer, who is always seen as a man pouring out a pitcher of water. He represents the age after Pisces, and when the sun leaves the age of Pisces, it will go into the house of Aquarius. In the Old Testament when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments tablet, he was very upset to see his people worshipping a golden bull calf. The bull was the symbolic figure for the earlier religion of Mithraism which flourished in the age of Taurus. The fact is that the golden bull is Taurus the bull, and Moses represents the new age of Aries the ram. Judaism The traditional image of the sun is used also in Jewish art. A mosaic floor in Hamet Tiberius presents David as Helios surrounded by a ring with the signs of the zodiac, as well as in Hamet Tiberius. Figures of Helios or Sol Invictus also appear in several of the very few surviving schemes of decoration surviving from late antique synagogues, including Beth Alpha, Husefa, all now in Israel, and Naran in the West Bank. He is shown in floor mosaics, with the usual radiate halo, and sometimes in a quadriga. In the central roundel of a circular representation of the zodiac or the seasons, these combinations may have represented to an agricultural Jewish community the perpetuation of the annual cycle of the universe or the central part of a calendar. Bibliography Behrens, Stefan, Sonnenkult und Kaisertum von den Severn bis zu Konstantin I. Geschichte, Historia. Steiner, ISBN 9783-515-08575-5. Heimans, S. Sol Invictus, The Winter Solstice, and the Origins of Christmas, Mausai in Calgary 3.3. 377-398, ISSN 1496-9343, OCLC 202535001. Heimans, Stephen E. Sol. The Sun in the Art and Religions of Rome, ISBN 90-367-3931-4. Matern, Petra, Helios und Sol. Culture und Iconographie des Griechischen und Romischen Sonnengotts, E. J. and Larry, ISBN 978-975-8070-534, Weitzman, Kurt, ed., Age of Spirituality, Late Antique and Early Christian at, 3rd to 7th century, 1979, Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York, fully online from the Metropolitan Museum of Art.